Okay. Hi, everybody. As you join, um, I want you to just type in the chat box who you are, where you live, and what you're hoping to get out of this webinar tonight. We're going to be sharing a lot of great tips. We have uh, some really important information, and we have some past at course attendees who are going to be sharing their experience with the Find Love Online course. So just um, if everybody knows where the chat box is, it's at the bottom of your screen, hopefully. And I'm not sure what device you're on, but um, hi, Andrea from North Royalton, Ohio. Welcome. Andrea, you're a Your Last First Date group member, so it's nice to see you and you're excited to learn a lot. Awesome. Who else is here? And we'll type in here so I can see you. I know there's usually a little bit of a lag, so I am going to see who you are as you're typing. And um, let's see. Hi, Claudia in San Francisco. Welcome, Libby in San Francisco. Oh, maybe you guys should get to know each other. Meryl, welcome from Newton, Massachusetts. Looking forward to a new approach after a breakup. Oh, I'm sorry about the breakup. Nancy in California, always interested in learning, sharing, and supporting. Thank you. Lori O from Sarasota, curious to hear what you have to share. Jennifer from Syracuse. Welcome, welcome, everybody. I thought somebody just joined, but then I don't see them anymore. So let's get started. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy life to join me tonight for this info session on my upcoming course, Find Love Online After 40. You're going to hear from some past attendees, course members who are going to share how their lives changed, how their love lives have changed. Some of them are in relationships now, some are not. And all of that's great. Um, we come in and out of relationships. And for me, success is not just about being in a relationship. It's really about making some positive changes in your life. And this course definitely has helped people shift their mindset. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So you're going to learn the number one thing that keeps people over 40 single. You're going to learn how to create realistic requirements for a partner. Most people don't get that right. And you're going to learn my three secrets to finding love after 40. We're going to be on this call for about an hour and a half. So please stay on until the end because I'm going to be opening up for Q&A. And I have a special exclusive offer that I just added today, and I'm excited to share it with you. So stay on till the end. And I invite you now to shut down anything that pings or dings or anything that's going to take away your attention because you're here with me. You're taking this time for you and I want you to be interactive. I have already asked you to share some information in the chat area, and I'm going to be asking you questions throughout this webinar. And you may want to have a pen and paper handy because I'm going to be sharing a lot of valuable information that you can apply immediately to your love life. And um, I am going to share some slides in a minute, but I see that we have the attendees here. And so let's start with Patty, who's in Washington. Patty, can you unmute? So um, there you are. Yeah, I'm I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so Patty so took my course. Yeah, tell tell us a little bit about where you were when you started the course and why you took the course and where you are today. Okay. Um I'm a widow. Um, my husband's been gone for two years. And before, um, and so I hadn't dated for almost 30 years years and did not date that much when I was dating uh, and didn't enjoy myself at all when I was when I was um, when I was dating in my early years and so I decided I wanted to find another partner and um, which entails dating meeting meeting men so I um, started taking Nance um, taking Sandy's course so that I could learn to enjoy myself and learn what I actual um, skills that work to find a new partner and to have fun. 
Yeah. So a lot of people come to the course where they have not started dating yet. They've been in either a long-term marriage or a widowed like yourself, and they're looking for love now. And other people come to the course after dating online for a long time and having no success. So you're, you're one of the people who came with like, how do I even start this thing? And so tell us a little bit about what you learned in the course and, and then we'll go to what happened after. So I learned how to write a profile for an online dating profile. Um, that would be, um, interesting, not too long, give good information and set out goals about myself and about who I was looking for. And um, I would not, I wouldn't have known that at all. If I hadn't, if I hadn't taken this, this class, this course, I wouldn't have known even how to start. And I would have quit online dating after maybe a week. <laughs> that would, <laughs> that would have been, that would have been the extent of my patience. And this has helped me um, to be able to stay the course and to go on dates and learn about men because I really did not have that much knowledge. And so I learned about, about how to date, how to handle myself, um, how not to be scared, how to have fun on a date and not be, um, hold on to it so tightly that I was terrified every time I left the house to, to meet a man. So, um, this has helped me enormously. Hmm. Well, I've seen you transform and you hired me as a private coach after taking the course because you realized you still wanted to learn more and be guided. And you really did an amazing job of transformation. And so I'm I'm just so Thank proud you. of all the relationships that you've been through, all the dates that you've been on. And tell us a little bit about what you've learned in this process of going out there and dating. Um, that I am okay. There is nothing wrong with me. And if a relationship does not work out, if you go out with a man and you like them and the relationship doesn't work out, I mean, unless I, I, it's, it's not me. It's not, I don't have to mold myself to fit a man. What I need to do is, um, be my whole self, let that person be their whole selves and sometimes you just aren't a match and you can just let that go it's okay mm -hmm. it, I mean your feelings will be hurt sometimes and you may not feel that great after the experience but you, you will be fine because you you are enough that's what I learned is that I am enough that's beautiful and I saw Leslie clapping and giving you a thumbs up. So, and feel free to chat in the chat box uh, and, and ask any questions of any of the people that I'm having up at the beginning of this webinar, because uh, I'm just, Patty, what you said is just so beautiful. And you said something else recently that I love, which is about holding dating lightly. And um, can you explain a little bit about what you mean by that? Well, I know that in the nineties, when I was last dating, I, you know, I wanted to find a husband and I would just, you know, I would just go out. Are you, it's like, it was like the book. Are you my mommy? <laughs> it's like, are you, the, <laughs> are you my future husband? Are you going to be my boyfriend? Are you going? And I would just hold that so tightly. And I would be so, you know, what, what do I need to do to make you like me? What do I need to do? How do I need to change myself? Am I too fat? Am I too this? Am I too that? And, you know, and, and now, well, first of all, I'm older and it's like, this is it. So <laughs> what you see is what you get. I am fine. As long as I'm doing work on myself and, you know, I try to be a kind and generous person, as long as I'm my full self, I'm fine. I'm looking for someone who I can partner with who will be their full selves. And, you know, we will have qualities and values that match. And I until then I can go out, I can go out, I can have fun. I've learned something from every person I've gone out, sometimes not very nice things, but I've learned, so <laughs> I've learned something from, from all of the, the dates I've been on. Yeah. And I can just see your wrong. confidence. Your confidence mm -hmm. is just so engaging and so beautiful. 
So thank you for sharing, Patty. I am gonna just ask you to mute now. I really appreciate you. And thank you for your comment, Nancy. Amen, Patty. Which brings me to Nancy. Nancy, would you um, unmute yourself and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Nancy. I live in California and um, I'm a nurse. I'm, I've been divorced for, I don't know, 13, 14 years. I have two young adult sons. Um, my 23 year old lives with me currently. He's working full time though, so it's all good. And I, um, uh, I think my first uh, encounter with Sandy was um, uh, with the Women of Value Club. And I had just uh, broken up or got broken up with really very short lived, but uh, a relationship that I pinned on a lot of energy and a lot of chemistry. And I, I thought that he could possibly be the one, you know, it was one of those, oh my God, this is it. He's got to be the one. And I was crushed. But from there on, you know, Sandy, it was like, she was so great just in that particular um, instance that it was one of the, yeah, one of the Women of Value Club things. And um, so helpful. I took a lot of notes, started listening to her podcast, just doing a lot more on the group side and just learning, learning, learning. And I don't think I would have had um, the confidence to get on match and do a profile without having taken Sandy's course. I mean, I was very, I didn't even know where to start. Uh, I had safety issues. I just thought, oh, well, you know, they're, they're, maybe they're all gonna be creepy, but it was just really terrific directed guidance to get where I wanted to be to date online. So I really, you know, thank you, Sandy. Oh. <laughs> well, it's, you're a beautiful example of somebody who came into my world with devastation and breakup and heartache and choosing the wrong people and letting people treat you in a way that wasn't dignified. And look where you are today. So you took the course, you got on match, you had the courage to overcome a lot of fears and to be really clear about who you wanted to meet and tell us about who he is. <laughs> oh, yes. I've been dating a nice guy for about, gosh, I think it's like nine months. And um, we're having a great time. We're really getting to know each other. He lives about 64 miles from me, which I guess isn't that far. But in California with traffic, I mean, it could take an hour and a half to two hours to get back and forth. But um we're with each other pretty much every weekend and he's very consistent. We've taken a couple of trips. They've gone well. Um, he's younger than me and um, I probably would have never had uh, the guts to go out with a younger guy had I not taken the course. And he, you know, he liked me on match and I was like, oh yeah, it's a cup of coffee. What have I got to lose, right? Would I have done that before? I would have probably gone into analysis. Oh, he lives 64 miles away and he's too young. I would have said no. Instead, I, you know, we, I think we progress things very, fairly slowly and it's all going really very well. And I think taking the course also, you know, just like Patricia was saying, I, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm way away from that mindset of thinking that there must be something wrong with me if I'm still single or why did I go out with that guy? He ended up being like this, just the blame game, the so much about what I'm doing wrong. Now I feel like I, you know, what, what I do right. And then I'm making far better choices. And then if I, I mean, I did date, date a guy that lived like two miles down the road for me that you know, was pretty nice initially. It seemed okay. But when it became very clear to me that there are some deal breakers, which break the deal. <laughs> that's another thing. That's a very good lesson in all this. You know, lots of times we're like, well, you know, maybe it'll get better or it's not that bad. Is it? Well, if it's a deal breaker, it's a deal breaker. No matter if he's got like all those other things that are uh, must have. And um, I had one of those with this gentleman and I had like a laser focused uh, session with Sandy, which is those are great too. I mean, boy, was it laser focused and it really got me clear as to what I did need to do next. And um, I, it, I learned a lot about setting boundaries because he was doing, you know, saying some things that really did not go over very well with me too. And I did not 
get wishy-washy about it. I was very clear. And, um, and I think I've also learned that if things, you know, don't work out with someone, uh, I don't necessarily have to be their friend. I can say, uh, don't text, don't call, uh, or block if necessary. Don't have to be everybody's friend. No, no. <laughs> and that's been a big change for you from oh, yeah. wanting to make everybody happy to wanting to make mm-hmm. Nancy happy and yeah. learning what it was that would make you happy. And those deal breakers, man, so many people ignore the deal breaker when they're a must haves. Yeah. And yeah. so that's, that's one of my big teachings. And, um, and those laser sessions, by the way, are a bonus in my, my course. And so if you're lucky enough to get in early, you get a free laser session with me, which is valued at $300 at the regular price. So um, thank you for sharing, Nancy. I love watching you blossom and bloom and your, your love story is just beautiful. And the other thing I want to really highlight here is that so many people overlook somebody because of our old way of thinking. And we're going to go deeper into that in this webinar tonight, because if you had approached dating with the old mindset that he was too young and too far away, you wouldn't have this beautiful relationship with somebody who treats you beautifully, who has your must haves and none of your deal breakers. So I'm really happy for you. And thank you for sharing. All right, Leslie. You took the course and um, you have a little bit of a different point of view because you came to this course from a different perspective. So tell us a little bit about where you were when you started. Yes. So hi, everyone. I'm Leslie. Uh, I'm in California also. Um, I've been divorced for many years and met guys both in real life that I was set up with and then uh, tried various dating sites mainly match and I tried some of those uh, niche sites you know there was one on if you like sports and one if you like yoga and uh, nothing was working I had some dates and some short-term relationships but Man, um, I just knew I, I needed to figure this out. Something, you know, the old thing about what am I not doing right? Uh, and somewhere, Sandy, in the internet meta world, I found you. And when you did this course, I thought, yes, I need to get some better skills because there are some skills that you need, you know, writing a profile, knowing how to um, initiate conversation, how to get off the darn site and start interacting with the, I mean, there's just some things to learn because this is not something, and I'm sorry, I can't get that thing off. That's okay. This, this is not something that, you know, we, any of us grew up learning how to do. So I really think having guidance and Sandy's course is always so content rich and so well organized that it's it's a joy to take courses from her. I've taken a boundaries course from her that was incredible. So I am not currently dating, um, but I'm very close to <laughs> getting back in there. Um, a lot of it was because of COVID and I don't want to go into all that, but I do want to share um, some of the things that I got from the course. Mm. Uh, and also, I want to ask, because it correlates to this, why this was important for me to do. Um, I am also in Sandy's 
uh, your last first date Facebook group and in her woman of value group because I'm a person who learns a lot from others and I, I often need to hear some of these themes and examples repeated. <laughs> I mean, yes, I, I learned a lot from Sandy's course, but it's very helpful to me to hear uh, people talk about their challenges in our your, your last first date group because it gets more specific. And then I go, oh, right. You know, maybe if they had spoken up earlier, then, and rather than making an assumption, then, you know, they would have had more clarity. I mean, it just reinforces being in that, that group, our group um, really reinforces, I think, what you all are going to learn in the course. And besides, I'm a moderator, so. Yes, a wonderful moderator. And uh, I love the group or else I wouldn't be a moderator. <laughs> but here are some of the things I learned. Uh, don't take things personally. That was huge for me. And, you know, I, I, it's hard. I'm not putting anyone down who who does take things personally but that was huge for me that I can't possibly know why the guy didn't respond to my absolutely brilliant email <laughs> text I sent him because I learned so much from Sandy on how to word things and how to be playful and how to ask questions you know we don't know what's going on in the guy's life so not taking things personally has also helped me tremendously, <laughs> uh, even though I'm not dating in my personal life. So there are things you're going to learn in this course that I believe also apply to your everyday relationships. I really wanted to make that point. Uh, yes, they ex extremely will help you in your dating world but you know it's kind of a continuum i mean it's about communication it's about speaking up it's about being clear what your wants and needs are it's about setting boundaries i mean all those things have helped me in my personal life and i'm not perfect by any means i'm constantly going hmm I just think I maybe should have set a boundary there. Uh, but, you know, that's all part of growth, right, Sandy? Mm -hmm. I mean, once you set on this path, I'm just so glad I did because <laughs> um, I just don't want to, even if it's still a little bumpy where I'm still course correcting, um, I just feel there's so much of value that you guys are going to learn in this course. Um, oh, thank you. And relationships are relationships, no matter if it's dating or your family or your friendships or your work relationships, all of these things apply. And so I always say it's not just about dating ever. People come to me for dating and they end up with the skills to choose a better nanny and the skills to choose oh. an assistant. I mean, I've had people use the same must have formula to hire somebody to work with them. And it's, it's all the same, somebody who wanted to get an apartment. I helped her get an apartment with her must have and deal breaker list. I oh. must have cross ventilation. I must have a North facing building. And if you don't have that clarity, you come in and you go, I don't know why it just doesn't feel right. And, you know, we're in this fuzzy place and I like clarity. Clarity is good. Those are great examples. Thank you for amplifying because that's been huge for me. Mm. Uh, and I continue to refine it because uh, it's a different mindset. Mm -hmm. But uh, well worth it.
And I just have one more thing to say that I learned from you, Mm -hmm. either in this course, I think it was in this course. A profile is not a person. Yep. Did you say that in the course? I do. Okay. Oops, write this down. (laughs) Make it your new bumper sticker. Uh, Well, maybe not a bumper sticker. uh, (laughs) And it works both ways. It works with, we fall in love with a profile and we think this person is amazing and it turns out that they're not. Or a person has a really horribly written grammatical errors, not such great pictures and turns out to be a gem. And so in either direction, and I really, I know there's this new thing, burn the haystack. I don't, you probably have all heard about it. Some yeah. of you are in the Facebook group. Yes. Their whole approach is the person makes one little mistake or says something that feels like it could be bad you block them and burn them. And I do not have that approach. I believe that people are human. They're not haystacks. And we are looking for the needle in the haystack, but we don't burn the haystack down. We don't burn every single person who isn't a good fit. We are more gentle. We're more compassionate. Um, And I understand her approach and I'm not putting her down, but I, I think that you know, we all have to understand where people are coming from in terms of that you're a guide. Everybody has a different philosophy and a different approach. So thank you so much for sharing, Leslie. You have been with me for so long and I really, truly value you. Thank you. It's mutual. <laughs> oh, ah, thank you. I think. Oops, I just muted you. Sorry about that. You in the middle of saying something. <laughs> Um, and so we also, I saw Annalena came on. Annalena, you have a wonderful story to share. Can you unmute yourself and turn your camera on? Hey, I'm trying. Okay. <laughs> Can you see me? Not yet. Um, well, shoot. Can you hover over your video? I can... I can ask you to start your video. That might help. Hmm. She is here. We see her. You can see me. I see you and hear you. Yay. (laughs) Annalena, you are such a, uh, such a prize student that we've had a whole podcast about your stories. <laughs> so true, we have. share for anyone who hasn't heard your story yet. And you're even on the, uh, on the, the website on the, the course page, yeah. uh, share briefly why you took the course and some of the okay. key learnings to get to where you are today. I was widowed right before I turned tw- uh, 51 almost said 21. <laughs> That's young. And um, I just turned 59. So it's been a little over eight years. And um, I started dating about two years later. And, um, you know, the, the interesting thing is, is that my, I met my late husband on match, the very first few months a match existed. So you know, I jumped back on match thinking it would be the same. And it wasn't. Holy moly. It was a circus. And, you know, back in the day in 95, there wasn't all the, the, the spammers and scammers and all that. And, you know, there wasn't even pictures, <laughs> actually. So, but, um, so there's quite a learning curve. I met a guy and we tried to make it work for, I think it was a little less than two years when it was good. It was great. And when it was bad, it was horrible. It was just a very tumultuous relationship. And, um, I finally just had to end it because I, I, the drama and we're actually still friends and we're, we're much better off as friends. He's got some demons and and issues and, undiagnosed bipolar and 
we just couldn't make it work. And um, then I was still online dating, um, tried POF, match wasn't very popular where I live in North Carolina. Um, tried all the different ones out there, Facebook, even Facebook dating. I did a lot of first dates, a lot of first dates, very few second or third dates, um, had like a couple of baby relationships that never really came off the ground. And then, um, then came COVID and, um, I signed up. I don't know. Somewhere along the way, I happen upon your, or maybe I was invited to it, the uh, last first date on Facebook. And it is an amazing, amazing group. And I've learned so much from you. I've learned so much from all the other ladies. Um, and then you were advertising, um, I forget what it was called, but it was like it was a uh, fine love online during the pandemic. Cause what yes, happened that's was uh, that's, that's the, when I it. first launched the course, the, yes. everybody was struggling with what do we do now? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I said, you know, this is a great opportunity to yeah. date online. And yeah. a lot of people were just shutting down the whole idea of mm -hmm. dating. And I said, well, this is where we can get closer with men because we're actually not meeting, but we can talk and video chat, right. and learn how to chat on video and, and we'll take all the things that are issues off the table, like yeah. sex and who pays on the first date, because there was no first date. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so it was just like reinventing the wheel. Mm -hmm. And that's when the idea came to me. So I've taken that course and I keep improving it over the years and especially when COVID yeah. ended, but you took it in the middle of COVID when things yeah. were shut down. Towards the end, we, we were actually starting to open up here Mm -hmm. Um, so I was able to go out, you know, when I, when I met my guy, I was able to go out right away. But, um, what I learned from your course was that I needed to focus less on what I was wanting from a guy and more about what I was bringing to the table. Because I think that a lot of us are just like, okay, I have, you know, all these deal breakers and also learning to break it down to five, five deal breakers, five must haves. And during the course, um, there was only like, what, six of us ladies, I think. And we all rewrote our profiles and had them critiqued by each other and by you and really fine tuned everything. And I think the clincher for me was, it's okay to um, date younger. It's okay to date somebody who's shorter than you. Um, I'm almost six foot. And so I've always had a requirement that <laughs> they had to be six feet, which is the dumbest thing ever. I mean, would I date a, a guy that's five, four? Probably not. But um, basically then when, um, you know, when he liked me and I saw his profile and he's like, oh, he's an inch shorter than me. He had a terrible photo. It was like really dark, like a dark selfie. You could barely really tell. And he's a little bit younger than me, but he lived uh, close by. He had all his teeth. I always thought that was so funny. He said, I have all my own teeth <laughs> and I can drive. <laughs> Which I've had some, I've had like three or four dates where the teeth was like the main focus. Like they, they didn't have teeth or they had really rotten teeth. And so there, it's been traumatic kind of. So maybe, maybe that kind of snagged me and that I have all my own teeth, but um, he's a guy that I would have swiped left on before your course. And so when he sent me a message, I said, hi, we started talking. Um, he was respectful. There was no, you know, any other, any of the issues that a lot of women run into. He's totally respectful. We, we chatted back and forth. Um, and I think I met him only like two or three days later, he asked me out for dinner and we met and I just, I knew I knew. And that was in January of 21. So two and a half years later, 
more than two and a half years later, you know, we're, we're still together and he, he makes me so happy and he, you know, he always shows up for me and, um, and I make him happy. We, we communicate great. We, you know, we're, we're almost living together. So that's kind of a unique situation, but we bought land and split it. And he put a uh, short-term solution on his land was a little uh, double, uh, a little single wide because he has a son that's still living at home. And he, they had to him and his ex-wife, he lived in the home till his son turned 18 and they've been div divorced for several years. And then they sold the home. So he needed to land somewhere. And I built a home on my portion and I just moved in two months ago. Ooh. So now we're next door. We just walk, we have 12 acres together and we just walk back and forth. And I have triplets that are 20, almost 21 that are still living at home, but they're all going to be heading off in different directions at the end of the school year. And his son is a year younger and we're hoping he'll fly the coop pretty soon. And as, as, soon as we have all all the kids out he's going to move in with me and we'll either rent out his place or you know one of the kids or whatever so we don't live together but we're we've made a life commitment and um we travel a lot um we did some of the work on on this new house together and we just have a great time and and it's it's the opposite of the relationship I had before. Um, he's, he's just a chill guy. You know, he's calm. I'm, I'm a real laid back, calm drama verse kind of person. And it's so good to have that, you know, it's just, I just, you know, it's just a peaceful, calm life that we really enjoy. I love you know, it. before with the drama with that other guy, I thought I was going crazy. Yeah. I mean, I was just, you know, it's going out of my mind. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I thank you because you, you helped me. I don't know if he would have seen my old profile and if he would have even said hi. So, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's great. I'm I, so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. I yeah. love your story. It's just, it's wonderful that mm -hmm. you met him. Um, because you were able to see beyond the old list and yeah. that wouldn't have happened. And so many times people miss each other by one inch and mm -hmm. five miles and, mm -hmm. you know, five years. And mm -hmm. so we have two stories tonight of women who would have missed and wouldn't have taken the chance had they not taken mm -hmm. the course. And so I am yeah. just thrilled for you, Annalena. I think your your story is such an inspiration. And uh, thank you for sharing it so many times thank with you. me and with thank all of us here. Thank you so much. Oh, my absolute pleasure. pleasure. I, I mean, yeah. it just makes my heart so happy to know that I can help people find love. So thank you. All right, I'm going to mute you. Um, Anybody have any questions for any of the people who spoke before I get into some of the content for tonight? And we'll have time to question me at the end. Um, so I'm just going to see if anybody has any questions. Libby said, love that. And we have Andrea said, that was great, Patty. Thanks for everybody's comments. Nancy said, amen, Patty. Very inspirational, right? These women have just transformed. And I just makes me happy. So let's, uh, let me share my screen. And let's see where is, hmm. Okay, I cannot find it. So hang on. No, nope. let me stop sharing because I'm sharing the wrong thing. Okay, let me try that again. There we go. Everybody can see the PowerPoint. And I am going to hide the video. All right. So a little bit about me, because some of you know me, some of you don't. I am Sandy Weiner, obviously. I'm the founder of Last First Date, and I have another company called The Woman of Value. 
I am a TEDx speaker. I have uh, experience as a dating and relationship coach and a woman's empowerment coach. I'm also the author, author of two books, The Woman of Value and How to Thrive, How to Thrive in Life and Love and Choice Points in Dating. And I have two podcasts. And uh, the one that's up here on the slide is Last First Date Radio. And um, many of you have mentioned my Facebook group, Your Last First Date. I also have two video channels. Uh, one is under my name, Sandy Weiner, and the other one's under your under last first date. I'm all over social media. So I'm just curious uh, if you can take a moment and write in the chat how you know me. Do you know me through my books, through my podcast, through the Facebook group, through taking courses with me? How have you found me? How do you know me? Are you on my email list? Have you heard me on a summit? I just am curious how we are connected. So if somebody if you guys can take a second. Uh, Meryl, through a friend who was part of the Facebook group. Awesome. Anybody else? Uh, Libby, books, podcasts, and Facebook group. They heard me on a summit. Yeah, I've been on a lot of them. Andrea found me on the Facebook group. Nancy, Facebook group. Lori, through the podcast. Awesome. And Patty first heard me on Second Act TV. I've, a few guys have heard me on there. That's great because I've been on there a lot. I was one of the first guests on Second Act TV and there's a whole section on dating after 50. So I have been a regular guest on there. So if you haven't seen it yet, there's so many fantastic videos. She interviews so many great people. Jennifer said, a friend loaned me your book, Becoming a Woman of Value. Then I started listening to the podcast and joined the Facebook group. Awesome. All right. So tonight I am going to be sharing a lot of things. So, oops, let me, here is what I'm going to be sharing. The number one thing that keeps people over 40 single, how to create realistic requirements for a partner and three secrets to online dating success over 40. So what do you think is the number one thing that keeps people single? And I see Claudia's comment. It's been so long, I don't recall how I began to get connected. I'm on the Find Love, the Facebook group, get your newsletter and sometimes listen to your podcast. Um, I think you meant last first, your last first date. Facebook group, right? Uh, anyway, so why do you think, what do you think is the number one thing that keeps people over 40 single? Let's see who's gonna guess what you think it might be. Let's see, Lori, they stopped looking. Yeah, that happens. Andrea says, set in your ways, another great guess. Anybody else? Fears, says Nancy. All fantastic guesses. All right, so uh, let's see. Don't know how, Claudia says. That is also a good guess. Meryl says, dismiss people too easily without really knowing who they are. I love that one too. All great guesses. So. Here is really what I have seen is limiting beliefs. And some of what you have shared here is about limiting beliefs, our fears. And belief number one is there are no good men. Anybody here ever thought there were no good men? I, I even have a whole thing that I share with people who join my group that um, 10 reasons why men disappear. And then I have actually that's not part of that, but it, it, there's a there's an offer after you get that that helps you to know where all the good men are because they are there. We just don't know where they are. So what is the belief? There are no good men. And to turn that belief around, let's think about the fact that it might be true that statistically there are fewer men at this stage in life. Older men are much more interested in deeper and more meaningful connections. And that goes a long way towards finding true love after 40. There are good men, you just have to know how to find them and how to connect with them. 
but there really is a difference in dating at this stage in life. And I think a lot of people don't realize that men change just like we do. Here is belief number two. Older men want younger women. Anybody here ever have that belief? I would say that's a pretty popular one. And yes, there are some older men who want to date much younger women. And that's because they're driven by their egos. They want arm candy. They want women who are going to make them feel young. But we don't really want to date men who want that kind of woman. So there are incredible older men who want an equal partner. And some want an older woman, as we've seen tonight. They want to be with them in their own age and sometimes even older. So this is a limiting belief. If you walk around thinking all men my age want to date much younger women, you are not going to connect with men who are your age or even older or younger. And Claudia says, I'm surrounded by that a lot since childhood, cultural power differential. Yes, I think this is a belief that we have from when we're children. And the third belief is that online dating is scary, it's hard, and it's filled with scammers. We see this all the time. We see it in my Facebook group. Oh, it's really scary. It's, it's terrible. We heard it tonight. You know, there, there were women who shared tonight that dating seemed scary and hard and full of scammers. But the truth is, yes, while there are some people who are unsavory, that's true everywhere you go. If you were to walk into a mall, you would find all kinds of people just like you do in online dating. And so there are good men, you just might not be vetting properly. So you can stop dating men who are only interested in one thing, interested in sex, interested in a nurse or a purse. This is another thing we hear. And many women who have loved and lost are fearful and distrustful, and they're not willing to get back into dating, which was one of the, one of the beliefs that we had up in the messages. Um, let's see who said, stop looking, Lori. So yeah, it could happen because you have the same thing happen over and over. You get traumatized by the whole dating experience. But the goal is to find somebody who's going to add value to your life. And I think when you've not had great relationships, you forget that there are people who actually do add value to your life. And dating is about the long game. So while it can feel exhausting and you might feel like it's just better to stay home and forget about dating. If you don't date, you're not going to meet men and you are only looking for somebody special. One person, one person, they're out there. So dating after 40, it can actually be fun. And the key is to do something that I believe is the answer to everything. Change your mindset. A growth mindset is essential. If you're over 40 and you want to find love, actually, it's essential for anybody, any age. And what's a growth mindset for anyone who doesn't know? Here's the difference between a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. Somebody with a fixed mindset gives up easily. They avoid challenges. They don't accept feedback well. They basically give up and feel defeated when dating isn't working. Someone with a growth mindset is going to keep on going when they have rejection or setbacks. They see challenges as opportunities for growth and learning, and they know that consistent effort leads to mastery. Let me know in the chat if you have a growth or a fixed mindset when it comes to dating. So the people who give up easily who believe that, you know, I had this one relationship and it was terrible so that all men are going to be like that. We tend to have these ideas based on our experiences or, you know, I dated somebody who didn't own a home. So I believe every man who doesn't have a home is going to be financially irresponsible. And I'm never going to date somebody who doesn't have a home again. So let's see what people are saying here. Jennifer says, I like to think I have a growth mindset. Excellent. A growth mindset is so important. And the truth is you can change a fixed mindset into a growth mindset. 
And that's something that I help clients do. And it's something that I help people do in the course. And Meryl says, same, hoping it's growth and I get caught up sometimes. You are human. And we all get caught up sometimes, right? Claudia says, I've changed mine somewhat. I was always approached by older men, now by men of various ages, even younger. Well, that's good. And Andrea says, I'm working on having a growth mindset. I still have trust issues. Yeah, I mean, trust issues can definitely be challenging. And so um, without trust, but there's a way to build trust. And when I work with clients privately, I really help them to get to the root of why they do have trust issues and how they can slowly build trust with a new partner. And Libby says, definitely growth. Awesome. We have some new people joining. Awesome. Let's see. And uh, anybody else? Growth mindset, fixed mindset. And welcome to the people who just joined. We are talking about the importance of having a growth mindset. So here's how to view dating with a growth, growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. Dating with a growth mindset, you look at dating as an experience versus I hope he's the one. Most people go into dating with unrealistic expectations that you're going to meet the love of your life, or I hope that he's going to become my boyfriend. And I hope I have sparks. I hope I have an instant connection or it's a failure. And I used to date like that when I was younger, I used to get mad at people who set me up on dates that were not a good fit. I'd be like, don't you know me? Like I'm insulted that you would set me up with somebody like this. Anybody relate to that? And this leads to burnout. It leads to giving up too soon. And it leads to us feeling terrible about ourselves. Like, you know, what's wrong with me? Why did he not choose me? So instead, I encourage you to look at dates as an experience. It really takes all the expectations of putting that pressure of he has to be boyfriend material and it's all either going to be a good time or it's going to be a good story. It's going to be a good date or a good story. And I've, I'm sure we all have good stories. They're all fun to tell, especially to people who are not dating and are living vicariously through you. So um, experience versus is he the one? The next way to date with a growth mindset is to look at dating as an opportunity to make new connections. And again, this takes all that pressure off. You can make a connection that could turn into love. You can make a connection that can turn into a friendship or even a business connection. You will learn something new each date. You'll learn something about yourself. You'll learn something about men and you'll practice skills. These are really important. And that brings me to my next area of dating with a growth mindset. And that's to practice being open and vulnerable. It's one of the hardest things we do. We struggle with showing up vulnerably, showing up open. We have trust issues, we're guarded, and we're not really showing up as ourselves. I just had the Women of Value Club this month. My group coaching program was about authenticity. And we talked a lot about vulnerability and openness and speaking up early on. So the more you date, the more you can practice those skills of speaking up and sharing more of your true self from the very beginning and paying attention to the, the green flags as well as the red flags. So you're always growing and learning along the way. Another way that many people sabotage their ability to find love is by having unrealistic requirements for a partner. And Annalena talked about her unrealistic requirement of he had to be over six feet because she's tall and she never would have met her partner had she not had had she not changed her must have list. So give me an idea in the chat of some of the qualities, the things that are on your must have list if you have one. What's on your list? So most people are looking for something unrealistic like the bionic man in this picture. Anybody have any lists to share? Spiritual says Carol. Laurie says honest and kind. Who 
Those are all really good qualities. <clears throat> Kindness, says Nancy. Kindness, very important. Curious, I like that one, Meryl. Open and compassionate, says Patty. Beautiful. Has an active and healthy lifestyle, Jennifer. Claudia says tenderness, growth mindset, spiritual and confident. Beautiful. Mary Beth says respect. And loving and kind, says Carol. These are all wonderful. Loving and kind. Yes. So let's talk about what most people have. Owns a home, six feet tall, wealthy, always pays for everything, and a full head of hair. And these may sound a little crazy, but people actually have said this to me. We have started with these must-have lists and we have changed them because they are not must-have. Some of them are nice-to-haves. Some of them are not even important at all. So we have another comment here from Annalena being present and consistent. Uh, consistency, the best. Consistent, inconsistent men are crazy making. So here's some of my top realistic requirements. Emotionally mature, open to hard conversations, honest, respectful and sensitive, affectionate and ability to make good decisions. And the good decisions is just for me, one of the most important because how you decide things together, somebody who really makes poor decisions is not gonna be a good partner. And so this is the thing that people need to work on how you narrow down your list to the top five. And most people focus on the external, income, looks, height, job. For those of you who do join me in my upcoming course, Find Love Online After 40, you're going to learn how to really narrow down your must-have list and your deal breaker list so that you date with guidance. This alone has led so many course members to find their life partners. Meryl said age with a question mark. Yeah, age is to me unrealistic. I think, yeah, if he's 12, he's not going to be a good partner. But after 50, I would say we aren't that different. And I think that the person is more important than geographic distance. You can find love on a vacation and it can work. You can find love on a bus. If you know what you're looking for, you will be able to find love. And Carol says single. Single is important. Yes. All right. So let's go to the next section of this program. And that is the three secrets to online dating success. Online dating has become a tried and tested method for meeting new people. And notice that I said meeting and not dating because the dating sites are really just to introduce you to people that you would never have met in real life. It's easier than ever to browse hundreds of profiles of single men online, but you have to know what you're doing to have success. And a lot of people think they're dating when they're meeting, but they're actually not meeting until they're meeting. And so how do you get to that first date? How do you get to that meeting? So I'm gonna share my top three secrets to online dating success. Number one, be more picky. This may sound counterintuitive, but people often ask me, am I being too picky? I can't find anybody attractive on the dating sites or the dating apps. And you might be too picky if you're focused on the wrong qualities in a partner, as we've just talked about in reference to your must have list. And if you're in my Your Last First Date group, you have seen a beautiful post by a client of mine who just got engaged. And she had come to me saying, I can't find anybody I'm attracted to. And my therapist told me I'm asexual. And she really did not know what to do. She thought, am I going to be single forever? Well, she wasn't attracted to the guy that she ended up getting engaged to right away. And she would have only given him one date because that was her thing. I'm either attracted to him or not. And 
she ended up on the fourth date falling madly in love with him. And that is something that happens with the right kind of coaching. When you come and you think, I'm too picky, I'm not meeting anybody, but chances are you're not picky enough and uh, more selective, says Claudia. You're engaging with men probably who put forth very little effort. I see this all the time. You're working too hard to make a date with a man who hasn't shown you consistent and interest. And we've just talked about consistency being so important. Be more picky about the things that matter most and less picky about the nice to haves, like somebody who loves golf or reads the same books you do, somebody who's over six feet or owns a home, like we said before. And I go into more detail about how to shop for men online in the course. Annalena happened to be somebody who I chose. She won the contest. We have a contest every, every time I give the course. And I pick one winner who has posted her profile, her new profile and her new photos that we have all gone over in the course. And I go online with her just like I do with my private clients. And I was able to shop with her, shop for men. And often we don't even know what we're looking for. So like Annalena said, the guy that she's with now, he had a blurry photo. It was dark. It was a selfie. And he did not have a good write-up, but he was a lovely, lovely man. And from the first date, she knew she would never have met him. So how do you know who to contact, who to re respond to? Those are all the things that I teach you. All right. Secret number two, there are no best dating sites. People come to me all the time. What's the best dating site for women over 40? What's the best dating site for women over 50, 60, 70? There are no best dating sites. The sites and apps all work. Every day, people find love on every site. So I recommend that you just pick an online dating site or two and give it a try. In my course, I help you select the best dating site for you. You get to decide if you want paid or free. Maybe you want a matching site or a faith-based site. And I can share my experience with all of them because I've helped clients who were on all of these sites. So the issue is not usually the dating site. It's what you do on the site that matters. And again, in my course, I go into detail about the length of time that you should stay on the site before trying a new one and how many sites or apps to be on at a time before you get overwhelmed. Most people leave a dating site too soon or give up due to not having the right skills because you get frustrated. And Patty shared with us at the beginning that she would have gotten off in a week because she wasn't going to have the kind of success that she has now with my support. Your match could have been one swipe away. And so often this happens, you're about to get off the site and you see there's one more person who wrote to you and you're, you're going to close the whole thing down. And your friend says, you know, just write to him, write him back. He seems like a good guy. I've, I've gone online with, with clients who have said, there's nobody online. And I go on with them and I find them five potential matches that they haven't seen. So how you search and sort and sift really matters. And I help you do that in the course. The third secret, and let me take a drink and take a breath. And feel free to keep writing in the uh, chat because I am checking. Make the first move. Almost no women that I know <laughs> make first moves. They want men to pursue them. They want men to chase them. Why should women make the first move? Well, they make the first move because it's better to choose than to be chosen. It's better to be empowered, to take advantage of who you like rather than wait passively for somebody to like you. People will fall into your net and you may not like them. The site will match people for you and you may not like them, probably will not like them. So 
you get to choose, you get to be the chooser and you write messages that attract. And that's what I help you do too. And so you play hard to get that doesn't work anymore. It's outdated and it's grounded in bad science. According to science, testosterone levels are tied to gender roles, which have changed drastically over the past few decades. If testosterone levels are falling in men and rising in women, men are less inclined to be suitors than women at this stage in life. So stop playing hard to get and waiting for men to do all the things. And you're just giving him a green light. You're writing a simple message. And in your online dating guide, the book that I give you with the course, there's a whole section on how to write messages. I have scripts in there. I have ways that you can do messaging that actually gets men to respond. And uh, Carol has a question. How about when people are more involved in cycling or sailing or boating or things you're not into at all? Is that a reason to think no? I think you know what I'm going to (laughs) say. My answer is absolutely not. There are people who write things in their profile that are, uh, first of all, their their wishes and dreams, and they're not even realistic. Like they may want a certain body type or somebody who lives closer and you like their profile. So you write to them. It's happened to me when I was dating many years ago, I reached out to a man who was looking for a younger woman. He was probably five or six younger years younger than me. He lived about an hour away. He was looking for women who lived closer by, but he had a great profile. He had a great sense of humor. He was smart. And I wrote to him, I just took a chance and we ended up in a relationship. So you never know. But the thing with the sports and things like that, I have a great story about somebody who, the man that she went out with, uh, all of the pictures were him with his sailboat. He loved boating. She hated the water, but she said, you know, he seems like a nice guy. He's cute. I'm gonna, I'll go on a first date. What do I have to lose? She gets on the first date and he says, I'm separated. And she never would have dated him if she knew he was separated. So he explained to her, well, I am separated because I'm, I've been married twice already and I don't want to get remarried, but they ended up falling in love. And he told her, I'm, I'm out of the house. I'm not with her anymore. I just, why, why get divorced if I'm not getting remarried? She got married for the first time in her late forties to this man who never thought he'd get married again, who, who had his love of sailing was like his number one love. She hated being on the water. Well, guess what? They moved to Mexico that she loves the water now and <laughs> she loves to sail. But in the beginning, He went out on the boat and she would just do her own thing. And so a lot of times you do your own thing and it's not a reason not to be with somebody. So if you like somebody's personality and you focus on the must-haves, cycling, sailing, boating are nice to haves. It's nice to share those with somebody, but it's not a must-have. So as you can see, there are so many ways that you can meet men online after 40 You have to have a shift in your mindset and the right skills. And it's about staying open and focused and consistent on your path to find love, even when you're frustrated and disheartened. You're not going to find him sitting on the couch watching Netflix. He is out there. It's just a matter of time, energy, the right skills, consistent effort, and the right guidance. So are you ready to put all of what I taught you tonight into action? Let me know in the chat. Because here's the truth. Most of you are going to leave tonight with new ideas. You're going to have new insights, but you're going to lose momentum and you'll soon give up on online dating. I know this from my 15 years of experience. You listen to podcasts, you read a book, and you don't apply what you've learned. Why? Because it's really hard to adapt new skills on your own. But... If you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to be in the same place six months from now, 12 months from now. And you know the definition of insanity, which actually is not a quote by Einstein, which I didn't know. So what if you could work with me to help you find love at a fraction of the price of private coaching? And let's talk about price for a minute, because 
One of the dating coaches who I know and respect charges $1,500 for her one-day workshop on online dating. One day. Another coach has a boot camp that's going on in a few weeks. It runs for two weeks. My course runs for four. And her course is almost $1,000. My course is priced to be affordable. I started it during the pandemic when people were struggling with finances. And the price remains the same. It's half less than half of what other people are charging because I want to serve more people. I don't want price to be an objection. It's only $397 for a discounted single payment. And you have an option of making three payments at only 150 a month. So if you have struggled with online dating or you have never tried it before, I invite you to join my four-week online dating bootcamp. It's called Find Love Online After 40. We begin next week. And registration closes September 19th. And um, here's a little bit about what we cover. You're gonna get the must have and deal breaker list, which is so essential. You will release your fears and your limiting beliefs. You'll have a new improved profile, both for dating sites and apps. You'll be able to create two of them and you'll have them reviewed by me. You will have all of your photos reviewed by me in our private group forum. You'll learn how to message. You will get scripts to get men, men to get on a phone call and on a first date. How many people get lost in, in you know, uh, it's, it's that, that text hell. Um, you're going to be able to define and enforce your dating standards and your boundaries like Leslie talked about before. And you'll recognize red flags early on so you can walk away. And at the end, you will have a plan to find love online. So let me know if you're interested, if you, I'm going to put the course link here. Um, oh, and I told you I have a special offer for people who were here tonight. So I have decided to create a new bonus. Um, I am offering five extra bonus sessions, private sessions with me valued at $300 each. So for the first people who sign up, you get that extra bonus. And uh, Nancy talked in the beginning about how valuable those sessions are. She's hired me to do those laser sessions. You can talk about anything and you will get laser focused advice. I think many people who are on tonight have hired me for this. So I am gonna put the link here. And um, I am open for questions and comments. You can type in the chat if you have a question or I can unmute you. Or you can unmute yourself if you have a question. Four weeks or four months? It's four weeks, not, did I say four months? No, I didn't mean to say that if I did. No, my course is four weeks. It starts September 20th and it's on the 27th. It's uh, October 4th and October 11th. And all the sessions are recorded. So if you do not make any of the classes, you will get the recording. And the, the, the private group forum happens between sessions. So anybody who misses a, a, a a class is gonna get the recording and the support in the private group. So really, really helpful. It is at seven to 8.30, just like this webinar tonight, um, seven to 8.30 Eastern, four to 5.30 Pacific. And wherever you are, I'm not gonna do all the math, but um, yeah, so. I have learned to set boundaries with myself, self-care boundaries. And I was giving classes that started at eight o'clock my time and I was too tired to do that. And I didn't wanna have it in the middle of the day because I know a lot of you work. So this is my compromise um, to, to do it at a time that works where I'm wide awake. <laughs> And um, because I still have to process all the recordings afterwards and make sure that the replay is posted. And so it's a lot of work on my part. And um, so that's what time has worked for the last couple of courses that I've taught. Anybody else have questions? Uh, Lori, you're in a relationship for seven years, which I 
stay in but want to live with a partner's relationship will never be that. Do you recommend breaking up before online dating? Um, if you're going to get online and you've been in a relationship, then wouldn't it be cheating if you're dating online? I don't think you should do it while you're still in a relationship. Um, you could take the course and learn how to do online dating before you break up, but getting online would be an issue, I think, ethically. Um, and then we, we, somebody had asked me, it might have been you, Lori, I'm not sure. Somebody had written to me, whose name was Lori, about how large the group is. And that's another thing that I do differently than most people. I keep my groups really small. So you get individual attention. And we're talking less than 10 usually. I think the most I've had is 15. But most people are doing 50, 100. You don't get to talk to the host. You have other people running the groups. You have breakout sessions with people that you'd never heard of. And it's all me. You get to have direct communication with me, which I enjoy doing. And I don't want to ever have classes too big because I love the intimacy of small groups. Anybody else have questions? There's a bunch of other uh, great bonuses, by the way. If you go to the course page, you can see everything. And before we go, and while I'm waiting for questions, I'd love to hear some takeaways from tonight. I always like to ask, what do you, what did you learn? What are you taking away? What is uh, some of the key things that you're that you learned tonight? And by the way, Lori, um, if you have your must have list, then, you know, getting into a relationship with a partner who is, has the same relationship goals with you is really important in the future, as you know, so that could be one of your must haves, must want to live with a partner. Uh, Mary Beth, you came in late. So you're looking forward to watching from the beginning. Yes. I saw that you came in a little later and missed a lot of the, a lot of the most wonderful um, testimonials that we had also. Lori says, I really make the first move and I think that's part of my problem. Yeah, um, thank you for sharing that. There's so many things that I did not know when I started dating after my divorce. I definitely waited to be chosen. I was so scared on every date that I wouldn't be good enough as Patty was saying, I am good enough. I am enough. It is such an important thing to know that you have value and that they need to bring value, but you also need to understand that you have worth and value. And you may not have seen that in a past relationship. Libby says, put the qualities, character traits of my future man first when looking for my partner. Yes. Yes. So important and make sure that they're the right qualities, right? So, so many people think that they have that list down. I had a woman contact me and said he must play golf. And I said, really? Oh, and he had to have a full head of hair. And he was, I think she was 75. And I said, okay, so have a full head of hair. That's like 2% of all men. And he has to play golf. So it, let's say you married him and he got sick and he couldn't play golf anymore. Would you divorce him? So asking yourself, would I divorce him if he lost his hair? If he shrunk an inch? If he couldn't play golf anymore? I mean, then you can see like, oh, that's not really the most important thing. You know, so we don't cycle together. So we don't sail together. You know, my ex-husband loves to sail. I never liked to sail. And when we got divorced, he bought a sailboat and his girlfriend sails with him. It's all good. All right. Yes, I love great communicators, emotionally mature and great decision maker. My new top three. Awesome. So you're refining your list, Libby. And uh, Carol says, good observation. Wonderful. Anybody else want to share some of the 
things you're taking away from tonight before we before we close. And I really highly recommend that you sign up for this. I'm not going to keep the price at this low price anymore. Um, I really can't keep doing that, but this is the last time I'm going to keep it at this low level because I do want more people to be able to take the course. So there are price plans. There's all kinds of ways to do this. And for so many people, this has been the thing that got them over the hump and into the relationship that they really had always dreamed of. And Claudia, thank you for sharing your stories, ladies. Yes, thank you, ladies. I love your stories. We actually were supposed to have somebody else here who didn't show up for some reason, but a few other people who have been through the course, um, this woman, Sally, who is in an amazing relationship and as she was in my course and had just posted her new profile, she met the guy that is now her partner and they have blended families and it's amazing. Carol says, are there any dating sites you can hold your photos and profile for those people you choose that you can hold your, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Hold your photos and profile for those people you choose. Can you explain what you mean by that? meaning everyone doesn't see them. Um, yeah, you can go incognito and on match.com, you can only, um, the people who you like see your profile, but the people that you don't like or message don't. It's a paid extra service that you can pay for. Um, but I personally don't recommend it because it limits you. There might be people looking for you that you weren't looking for and you might miss them. So yeah, you're welcome, Carol. Yeah, there's all kinds of things. I mean, I things change all the time too. So whatever worked in 1995 with Annalena does not work today. And even the apps are changing. The, there are so many things that keep changing. I have all kinds of, of things. Yes, the deadline is September 19th, next Tuesday. Thank you for putting that up again. Um, like the apps, people take too long to read every single profile and they spend too long online. So I have great tips on how long to spend online every day. So you're not consumed by it and how to send those messages, how to look for love, how to, how to let somebody go with kindness, you know, just to say, hey, it doesn't seem like this is a really good match and being able to be kind and truthful and boundaried and clean up your inbox so that you're not filled with people who are, you're not interested in and you're just keeping them there because you're too insecure to let them go, but they're not the right people. And not asking every man to be your friend because they're not your friends. And so there are so many things that I have learned in my 15 years that I will teach you in four short weeks. It is a boot camp. It is so much less expensive than working with me privately. And it's a great way to get started. So if you've been thinking about it, please don't hesitate. These the, the course will fill up and I don't know when I'm going to be offering it again. So thank you, ladies. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you all for sharing, Annalena, Patty, Nancy, and Leslie for sharing with me and all of us and for just being as wonderful as you are. And I appreciate all of you and the replay will be sent out tomorrow. So look for it in your email and have a really good night, everybody. Bye.